Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we're going to be revisiting the RX 7600 XT. I've got some games that I've done some benchmarking. We've got some scores from 3D Mark, so make sure you continue to watch. <laughs> Right then, so when it comes to the overall revisit of this GPU, I will have to say that, of course, the CPU that I'm using with this system is a 5900X. It's got 32 gigs of Kingston DDR4 RAM, and it's got, obviously, it's got NVMe, it's got SSD for backup, it's got a X570 Pro Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard, and a 650-watt power supply from Be Quiet. So, you know... There's there's not going to be any bottlenecks when it comes to the overall CPU. But for 2560 times 1440p resolution, I've done three different tests. Forza, Horizon, Watch Dogs Legion, and uh, F123. Now, when it comes to the FPS, I'm going to do this separately. So, for the FPS, for Forza Horizon, the highest FPS, there was 153 FPS. Watch Dogs Legion, these are all high settings, just so you know. The Watch Dog Legion was 117 FPS, and F123 was 162 FPS. Right, so when it comes to the power draw for each test, Forza Horizon on 2560 by 1440, the power draw was 165 watts, and the temp was a 57. Watch Dogs Legion, it was a 200, pound, a 200 watt power draw this time with a temp of 59 and f123 there was a power draw of 204 watts with a max temp of 61 celsius right so i've also done 4k this is high settings and this is forza horizon a 4k resolution high settings the fps max i had was 99 watchdog legion I did have an FPS count of 71 FPS and F123, the max FPS I had was 97. So when it comes to the overall power draw for each test, now this is a 4K, so the power draw is definitely going to be more. Now for, for Forza Horizon, the power draw was 188 watts and the temperatures were 57. Watchdog Legion, the power draw was 204 watts with a max temp of 62 and the power draw for F123 was 204 watts with a max temp of 61. Now, some 3D Mark scores. Now, this, you're going to have to take my results with a grain of salt because no one uses 3D Mark for benchmarking unless, of course, they're do, trying to do a simulation. But what I will say is I've done this with the latest drivers for GPU. The all the latest drives for each test. So for Fire Strike Extreme, GPU scores 15,025. <clears throat> Physics was 32,627. Combined score was 6,960. Times by Extreme, GPU score was 5,307. CPU was 7,682. And then the brand new benchmark on 3D Mark is Steel Nomad. The GPU test was 23.44 FPS. Right, so look, yeah, I showed you some FPS uh, graphs. I showed you, obviously, you can get good uh, combined scores as well as good uh, graph scores in 3D Mark. The temperatures, of course, they're very good, but then again, this isn't exactly a powerhouse of a card. Now, what I will say for this particular graphics card was the main problem it had when it first launched, which was four months ago, was the price now yes the price has come down so it does make it more of a a better option to buy but what i would say is when they first came out the price that they had at release was ridiculous i understand that now seeing as i've seen the trend of gpu sales now with amd they are struggling to sell their gpus but what i will say is if you're looking for a 1440p card that's brand new, that obviously will come with a warranty and such, then I think this is a good option. 
but of course you've also got to remember that amd does also have i'd say the best bang for your buck card which is the rx 7800 xt now depending on which model you go for that's up to you i went the nitro plus and i've not regretted it it was 569 pound when i first bought it and it's gone down <laughs> it's lost actual value by like 30 or 40 pound uh, which is a bit ridiculous for me but i think that's the best bang bang for your buck graphics card but of course there is definitely an increase in price but if you're looking for something that's 300 pound brand new that comes with a warranty now you don't have to buy the sapphire model you can buy the other models that they've got as well but then again there's also the 60 the 7600 non-xt which is eight gigs but this one comes with 16 it's got the same memory bus and stuff and that the only difference really is clock speeds are up a little bit and it's got double the vram but this still can handle 1440 and 4k with no problems of course it's going to struggle with bigger games like uh hogwarts cyberpunk but because i don't actually play those games i don't use it i don't use them as benchmarks but obviously i will in the future but yeah look i just wanted to revisit it i just wanted to tell you that it's still a good card to buy of course you can get the 8 version the 8 gig version of this but then again you can also get the 6800 which is on par with the same performance that is really up to you i'm not here to tell you what to buy i'm not here to tell you you know which brand to go for that is completely up to you this is just me giving you overall benchmarks giving you my opinion and then obviously helping you that way but if you want to buy it then of course i will leave links down below and as always i hope you guys have a fantastic day and a week a week ahead of you i've got loads of stuff coming from cooler master they are on the way and i've got loads of stuff coming from thermal right thermal grizzly and more brands so make sure you subscribe and this is richard for wild Tech. good bye